everyone. Welcome to Celebration Sunday. We are week two into Celebration Sunday and today we are going to talk about the Sunny Days DSP. Um, we're going to make a really fun, beautiful, fun fold card featuring this DSP. It is so cute. I love this DSP. It's probably my favorite DSP in the Celebration catalog, but it's possible that I'm going to say that about all of the DSPs. So um, I am just pulling myself up next to me. So I have found myself and hopefully you guys are finding me as well. Um, I just love this DSP. We're going to talk much more about it in just a second. But before we do, um, I have a huge stack of stuff in front of me. So let's get through this stack and then we'll jump into the project. So January's paper pumpkin is filled and ready to come to me. So I can't wait to get January's paper pumpkin. That one coordinates with the perennial lavender suite or the... Yeah, per perennial lavender sweet um, in the mini catalog. So we are in the subscription period for February, and that is going to be the sweet springtime kit, and it's going to come in this adorable little box with a little bunny and chick on it. So I cannot wait for that one. Um, it says it's going to make nine projects, three each of three designs. Now I thought that that was going to be all cards, but then I read I read somewhere maybe on the paper pumpkin Facebook page. I read somewhere that it's going to be. Um, cards and gift boxes and it says that here too I guess I could have continued to read that but um, this one's gonna be so cute especially for little springtime cards and treats so <clears throat> make sure that you subscribe to February's kit if you want February's kit and there is a add-on die set that will actually coordinate with January February and March's kit this is still available I just checked about five minutes ago this is still available in my online store so if you want to get this um, add-on die kit die set you can do that it's $12 and it is a super cute die set that you're going to use over and over again. Okay, I'm going to pull the rest of my pile down because I want to make sure I can open these boxes. We have two new kits that were released in January. Now, if you are a fan of our of our kits collection, you're going to love what Stampin' Up! is doing this year. We are releasing two kits every month. I personally love our kits. They are great for gifts. They come in a box just like this. All you need to do is just gift this. It's perfect. The kits are all inclusive, which means they include everything you need. So, you're, if you're giving this to somebody, they don't need any additional supplies. Sometimes maybe scissors, but that's it. Um, they're all inclusive. They're great to travel with. If you're doing um, some road tripping or traveling, you can take these kits with you. Great to travel with because, again, they're all inclusive. So all you need to do is grab that box to go. So this year you're going to get two new kits every month. And this month we have this adorable panda friends kit and i cannot i haven't opened them and they, they literally just arrived and um i cannot wait to play with them but look how cute these little cards are um this is going to be great for valentine's day it's got like a little heart headband on i don't know if you guys can see that it is so adorable so i cannot wait to play with this one so this one is available in my online store in the kits collection you can get that panda kit um and then the other kit that they released this month my kit i'm gonna drop them on the floor the other one they released this month actually coordinates with uh, one of the sweets in the mini catalog and I can't remember what that one's called but this one's called rock legend and look how adorable this is this is great boy cards I think this is going to be good for like teenage boys too um, I might make these and just you know have them on hand when my son needs them for his friends so I think this is a really good kit so again the kits they're fantastic great gifts great for beginners too if you're trying to get your friend into um stamping to stamp with you get a kit they're so good and I love them so much. So um, if you have any questions, you can let me know. Um, you can shop for those kits in my online store. All right, guys, if you have not started shopping the mini catalog, you have to. It is so good. There are so many amazing products in here. I had my um, in-person catalog launch yesterday. And, um, man, we just love this catalog. It was so good. Um, okay, Celebration is active, too. So that means you get to earn some free stuff with every $50 you spend. Um, there is a free item you get to earn in here. There are lots of available, lots of stamp sets, lots of DSP. There's some ribbon in here. You guys, some of these stuff is it's a little bit hidden. There's some crinkle ribbon. And then there's also some gems here too. So there is lots of options for earning free stuff in this mini catalog, some stamp sets. There are a few $100 options. We use this Jungle Pals stamp set and dies last week. And then there's a couple more $100 options. So make sure that you are shopping that um, mini catalog. Now today we're using the Sunny Days DSP, which again I said was one of my favorites. So I cannot wait to, to show that to you guys. Um, tomorrow is the last day to sign up for my card crate. This is my class to go this month. This 
um, am I missing my envelope? I think I might be. No, this one is, um, it's so good. This, we're using the Sending Love Bundle. It is in the mini catalog and, um, tomorrow's the last day to sign up with payment for this class. Um, I do have an in-person option if you're in the Albuquerque area. If not, this class will be shipped to your door. It comes with PDF instructions, video instructions, as well as all the supplies to make the cards plus $20 in products. The class is $35. If you need it shipped, it's $40. That just helps offset some of my um, shipping costs. But it is a fantastic class. But tomorrow is the last day. Tomorrow, January 15th, is the very last day. Um, so are they only well supplies last? The kits? I think that's what you're asking. Um, you know... If, well, let me, if the kits go out of stock and they disappear completely from the website, then they're gone forever. If they go out of stock, but they're still on the website, that means that they're going to be replenished. So um, if you love the kits, I would say, yes, definitely shop for them sooner rather than later. But if they do go out of stock and they're still listed on the website, they will be restocked. Stampin' Up! does restock some of the kits, but they don't tell us which kits they restock. So I can't... I can't give a definite answer to those. Typically, yes, um, the kits are well supplies last, but sometimes they do restock them. I hope that answers quest your questions. It's a very um, long-winded answer to that one simple question. <laughs> um, this is what we are making today. We are making this fun gatefold, angled gatefold card. It opens up. It's so pretty. And we're using three different patterns of that DSP. Now, um, we're going to go over all the patterns of this DSP. This angled gatefold card has been around for a long time. I actually took a class by um, fellow demonstrator Chelsea Christensen, and she, um, she, I learned this how to do this one from her. And I think that I like the way she did it a lot better than I've seen some of the other ones do it. So I'm going to show you the way I was taught in my in my class but um, there are many instructions on how to make these angled gatefold cards so you can um, you've probably already seen them we are using that sunny days DSP like I said but we are also bringing in the perennial postage um, bundle for the greetings and for our little label here the perennial postage dies they give you all of these little like postage stamp shaped dies they have that little postage stamp edge on all of them and the greetings are absolutely phenomenal so get that one on your wish list for sure um, but this is what we are going to make today now I'm using my glass mat remember you can get this glass mat free when you join my team joining is easy and fun you get lots of perks as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator you get um, to see new products early you get to order new products early you get a discount on all those products um, and during celebration you get the glass mat studio for free which includes the gas glass mat um, the silicone mat and then a cleaning cloth with it now um I'm going to show you my sample um, starter kit for this week. So last week I showed a different starter, a different sample starter kit. So I'm going to show a different one this week. So these products total about $125. When you purchase a starter kit, you pay $99. You get to purchase $125 in product. I think I'm at like $124.50, $124.25, something like that. So in my... In my starter kit this week, I'm going to put the Heartfelt Hexagons Bundle. And this one, again, I just pulled this out of my box. But it is, I like, I love this punch. I, I didn't get it initially when demonstrators could order it a while ago. But I have since seen so many projects with this and I couldn't help myself. So I got this. Um, so this starter kit is geared more toward like the beginner stamper. They don't have everything, but they want to start building up their supplies. So punch bundles are great for beginner stampers because they, they don't need any special supplies. This is all you need. So I've also included some basic white note cards and envelopes. That's great for beginner stampers. The note cards come scored and you get the envelopes ready to go. So that's great too. Um, I'm including some of the paper butterflies, which is a great little embellishment, a great little addition. And you can color these. You can use Stampin' Blends, um, our Stampin' Write markers. You can use ink and blending brushes. So these are a great little addition too. I'm including some of our rainbow dots because there's so many colors in here. It's going to coordinate with so many different products. And then for our beginner stamper, they might need some ink pads. So I have three different ink pads. I have Coastal Cabana, Poppy Parade, Granny Apple. Granny Apple Green, but you can choose any. Of course, you can choose any. And then, of course, you're going to need a block. So I threw a block in there for our beginner stamper, too. Now, um, other basic supplies that beginner stamper might want is a bone folder and a take-your-pick tool. These are supplies you definitely want. And then just to finish it off, I threw in um, some ribbon for a fun embellishment. This is our black and white gingham ribbon. And um, so all of this 
four in your starter kit, plus you get the, the glass mat. Now, obviously, you get to decide what you want in your starter kit, so this is just an, a sample, kind of what I threw together for our sample today, but you can put whatever you want in your starter kit. That's what makes these things so amazing. <clears throat> They're customizable to whatever you want to do. So if you want to join my team, there's a link in the video description. You can um, check that out and join my team today. If you have more questions, please um, let me know. I'd love to talk to you more. If you're shopping, please use um, this host code when you head to my online store. This one will um, earn you some extra perks. All orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. If your order is over $50 or more, you're going to receive the make and take kit with that. And of course, during celebration, you're going to get all those extra perks and benefits. So um, use this host code when you're shopping. If your order is over $150, do not use the host code because you're going to get Stampin' Rewards. Okay, before we get to the card, I want to show you guys this DSP. It's pretty incredible. This DSP you can earn for free. This is the Sunny Days DSP. You can earn for free in um, during celebration with your $50 order. So I'm going to show you the front and the back of these. This one is so pretty. This is one of my favorite patterns, that one. Um, and then on the back, there are these little tiny suns, which are just adorable. The strawberries, I have some big plans for the strawberries coming up. So watch my blog for this. This is going to be a really good paper to use. And then we have some beautiful crushed curry butterflies on the back of that one. Some shaded spruce flowers, which are just stunning. And then we have some rainbows on the back. This is probably one of my favorite patterns, too. I just love this one. Um, some poppy parade flowers, really pretty. And then this background, the petal pink kind of check plaid. I just love that one too. This one is another one of my favorites, these clouds. And we have dies. I'll show you those in a second that will coordinate with these and die cut these clouds. Really cute. And then on the back of this one, be so good for a scrapbook page. You have like clouds on the top and then some rain coming down on the bottom. So pretty. And then our, the last pattern in here, this is all I have left of this piece. <laughs> I've used this one so much cherries on one side and then on the back is this pool party stripe which is just so 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 pretty <clears throat> so that is the sunny days dsp it coordinates with the bright skies bundle in our mini catalog so these are the cloud dies that are going to cut out that those clouds in there but this is such a good stamp set i love all these super encouraging greetings here so really good stamp set um so if you love the stamp set if you love this bundle make sure that you get this paper as well so really good paper i love it okay we move all that out of the way and we are finally going to get to our card i promise so um i'm going to show you one more product and then we're going to get to the card i promise in addition to the um perennial postage we are using the translucent floral dies and i am just using them for these little flowers um on the outside and the inside if you don't have um these check your whatever flower dies you have the um paper florist dies will also be a really good option for this but um flower dies i think are pretty are pretty standard you probably have some you love so you can always um check those out as well okay so let's start with our with our card base and i have a shaded spruce now i'm going to pull out my paper trimmer for this so we are going to use our beautiful paper trimmer this is such a good trimmer if you need a trimmer check this one out it's so good um, but we're going to do our scoring and our cutting with the trimmer. So I'm just going to pull this out Now we are going to score. This is your standard card base. It is eight and a half by five and a half. We are going to score at two and one eighth on each side. So I'm going to line this up at two and one eighth and I'm going to score. And this is on the long side on the eight and a half inch side. I'm going to turn around the other way and do two and one eighth on this side and score it. I'm going to move this out of the way for just a second and let's go ahead and fold and burnish on those score lines. If you don't have a bone folder in your card making, make sure you grab one. These are the best products. Now that two and one eighth should mean that this should meet in the middle. It shouldn't overlap. If it overlaps, just grab your trimmer, trim off just, you know, a hair until they meet in the middle. Um, if they overlap, it, it really doesn't matter too much, but um, they should meet in the middle. Exactly. So I'm going to grab my ruler. You can also use your paper trimmer for this. I'm going to grab a pencil as well. And we are going to mark at three quarters of an inch. This is the five and a half inch side. We're going to mark at three quarters of an inch on the top and the bottom. So three quarters of an inch. I'm just going to use my pencil and make a little mark. And then three quarters of an inch here and make a little mark. And we're going to do that on both sides. I'm going to flip it over and do the top and the bottom again. 
on this side. So three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch. Okay. So we're going to set our ruler aside and we're going to bring our paper trimmer back in. And what I'm going to do, and I'll go ahead and just draw a line on here. I don't know the pencil will show up, but we are going to trim diagonally from that, from that mark we made to the score line. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to put this in and I'm going to line this up along my, my track here. Just make sure that that mark is in the track and the end of the score line is in the track. And with our paper trimmer, the, the dark blade cuts and the light one score. So I'm going to make sure I'm using my dark one. I'm just going to trim that off. And we're going to go and do that on all four sides. I'm going to line up my, my mark that we made, all four corners. We're just going to trim that off. Keep going. Here's that mark I made. I should use like a white gel pen. Shaded Spruce is a little bit of a darker cardstock, so it's a little bit harder to see, but I think we'll make it work. Okay. Let me let's see. This lined up. Perfect. Just like that. Okay, so this is our angled gatefold. So it's going to meet in the middle. But as you can see from our example, this front flap goes over farther. So we're going to do a little bit of adjusting here. So I have another piece of shaded spruce, which is a five and a half by three and a quarter. And so I'm going to get out my pencil and my ruler again, and we're going to mark this one. This time we're going to mark it at one inch from the top and the bottom, just on one side. We're only going to trim one side here. So one inch and one inch. This one, you're going to have a little bit of extra prep work for this, this card, but it's going to be so good. Your friends are going to love this one. So this time we're going to go from that mark all the way to the corner. So I'm going to just cut that all the way to the corner. And this one will be the front flap. So from the mark here all the way to the corner. And there we go. So we have that. So this one's actually just going to adhere over that side just like that and it should all line up perfectly with all of our angles as you can see it's going to line up perfectly we're not going to glue it down just yet we're going to, we have a couple other things to do we need to trim our dsp so i'm going to grab my dsp pieces and i'm going to put my paper trimmer off to the side we're going to pull this right back out but we're not going to make any marks on this i'm going to pull out my my card base where did it go so i have two pieces of dsp from that um, sunny days the smaller one is let me, this one is, they're both five and three eighths tall. And then this one is two inches wide. And this one is three and one eighth inches wide. So let's start with our smaller one. We have our card base. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the corner up here. Let me hold this up so you can see. I'm going to line up that corner and I'm going to use my pencil. Let me move this over so it's right kind of where I want it. There's only going to be an eighth of an inch border around this whole thing. So not going to be a big border. I'm going to use my pencil and I'm just going to trace the back so I know where to trim it for the top. So let me pull out my paper trimmer. You could measure these, but then you're, um, because it's an eighth of an inch smaller, you're going to end up measuring like 16th of an inch. And, um, so that gets a little complicated. So just, um, you know, tracing and cutting is a little bit easier for this. Okay, so back to our flap over here. Now to cut our bottom one. So we have that perfect angle now for the top. Now to cut our bottom one, we're just going to move this down and I'm going to move it down a little bit more than, than the border on this side. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to move it down maybe like a quarter of an inch and we're just going to flip this over and I'm going to trace this angle just like that. So we're going to cut that and because we moved it down about a quarter of an inch, it's going to give us the same border on the top and the bottom. So I hope that makes sense. We're going to do it again. So this will line, now line up perfectly in our, in our little spot there. And all of those angles are perfect. So let's do the same thing now with our with our other one. So we're going to do the same thing on this one. And you know what? This is cut. I need to trim this. This is a little bit too big. This needs to be three and one eighth. Thank goodness I have my paper trimmer handy. <laughs> so this is going to have that same eighth of an inch border. So we're going to start by lining up the corner 
with the point up here where we trimmed it. So line up that corner and then just make sure you have that eighth of an inch border on the left and the right. When you're happy with that, just flip it over, grab your pencil and trace that line that you need to trim. We're just gonna line that up in our paper trimmer and cut right on that line. Okay. Now we have that, that same angle ready to go. It's flush up against here. Now I'm gonna pull this down about a quarter of an inch and that's gonna give me a border for the top and the bottom. So once you're happy with that, just flip it over and trace that line. And we'll stick that in our paper trimmer and just cut along that line. These little suns are so cute. So when we line this back up onto our paper, we're gonna have that same eighth of an inch border on all four sides. Okay, I hope that makes sense. That is, um, <coughs> That is the way I learned how to make these angle gatefold cards. And it sounds complicated, but when you actually start, you know, trimming them, it's it's really much easier. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and glue these down. And I'm actually I'm gonna use my liquid glue for this because this is has some corners over here that we want to make sure that we get into. And that's a little bit harder to do with a tape runner like our stamp and seal. So I'm gonna use liquid glue. Plus, this will give us a second or two to really make sure that we have this in the right spot. Perfect. That gives you that wonderful border on all four sides. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing on this one on our panel that we're going to put on the front. So a little bit of glue in the corners. Don't go too heavy in the corners because it will kind of ooze out just a little bit and you don't want to, you don't want it to ooze out all over your card. So go lightly in the corners and then you can just maneuver this to where you need it to be. All right, now we're going to stick this flap onto our front flap here. And so I'm gonna use liquid glue, but I'm gonna apply it on this flap and not on the, the flap that we're gluing down, not on the piece we're gluing to the flap. And that will make sure that we don't have glue going where we don't need it to go. And so the edge of this flap, you just wanna line up with that score line. Okay, and I'm gonna fold that just to make sure everything is nice and flush. And that is our angled gatefold card, just like that. Isn't that fun? And aren't those patterns just so perfect together? I just, I love that shaded spruce flowers. And then the pop with the, the red and the pinks on this one. So fun, right? All right. So that is, um, that is our, the basis of our card. Let's do some stamping and then we'll come back and do the belly band for this. So on the inside, we're going to stamp our greeting. We're going to stamp, say, thank you for your friendship. And then on the outside, we have the, the greeting on that little label that we cut. So let's pull out both of our white pieces. This is just an eighth of an inch smaller than our card base. So this is going to be um, four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So we'll start with this one. And I have shaded spruce here. So it's gonna coordinate with our card stock, with our card base. And I'm just gonna use my grid lines on this glass mat to get this straight. Um, and hopefully the we will stamp the greeting straight. I can't get right over it with my with my head, so that looks pretty good. I think I did a pretty good job. All right, and let's pull in our label. I've already die cut this label from the um, perennial postage dies, and look at that fun little edge there. So so cute. I just love that. I'm trying to cover up that glare from my light. And then we're gonna stamp this one on the front. And I'm gonna go to the to the right side of this label so that we have room for our flower. So just kind of center it. And just stick it onto the right. Okay, you mean the world to me. Thank you. So I love, I love the greetings in that perennial postage. Okay, let's let's move these out of the way and talk about our flowers for just a minute. So I have these beautiful flowers that I cut from the translucent florals dies. You can see I they're a little bit see through, and I did that with our vellum. So I die cut them out of our vellum. So I have a couple that I have die cut here. This is what they look like when they die cut from the vellum. And I have used our Stampin' Blends to color them. So we're going to color the two that I haven't colored. You're going to need two flowers total. So each of these will make, um, will make one flower. So I've die cut both of these and they'll, we're going to glue them together to make one flower like that. And so I have the, the flowers in Poppy Parade and I have the leaves in shaded spruce. So let's go ahead and color our flowers. And I am gonna grab some scratch paper for this. 
you can color directly on here with the Stampin' Blends. It will, it will come off, but um, for the video's sake, I wanted to, to just be able to speed things along, and with the grid paper, I can do that. So I'm going to take my Stampin' Blends, and I'm going to use the brush tip, and I'm just going to use like the side of the brush tip, and just kind of brush this along my, my petal here. It will dry pretty quickly, so we won't have to worry about really much dry time on our, on our petals. I'm using the dark of the Poppy Parade and the dark of the Shaded Spruce. Let's put that there so you can see it. Isn't that pretty? Um, if you want it darker, wait till it dries and then go back in and make it a little bit darker. We're going to do the same thing with our leaf. We're just going to use the side of the brush tip and I'm using my, my dark one. There we go. <clears throat> All right. There we are. So we have our flowers ready to go. And I'm just gonna use some, some liquid glue. We're gonna do one like this. And this one is gonna go on the inside. We're gonna do it nice and flat. And I'm going to take the, I die cut the little centers out of crushed curry. And I'm going to just add little dots of glue. You can use glue dots. You can even, especially with this piece, you can die cut with an adhesive sheet. And that will really help you out. All right, so we're gonna set this flower aside to dry. Not pretty, such a pretty little flower. And then we have the leaf to go with it. That's gonna go on the inside, but I wanna give that flower a little bit of time to dry. And in that vellum, it's so pretty. It kinda gives it like a, a shimmer almost. Okay, let me set these down. And then for the one on the front, we're gonna do a, a little bit differently. We're gonna kinda fold it up so that it, it just gives a little bit of a different look. So all I'm doing is I'm taking one petal and I'm just folding that, that up. And the front and the back are gonna look a little bit different with the the blends. If you want them to look identical, just color each side. Color, you know, one one on each side. And we're going to do the same on this side. We're just going to fold up this one and we're just going to glue them together. We're not going to insert them together. We're just going to kind of stack them and glue them together like that. So a little bit of glue on here. And we'll just stack that up like that. Kind of offset it a little bit so you can see some of those petals in the back. And then, whoops, that's why you need to give this a little bit of time to dry, but we're trying to rush this, so hopefully our glue will play with us. I am going to, I have another one of those centers out of crushed curry. I'm going to stick a tiny bit of glue on the back of that, and we're just going to stick that under this very front petal. I'm trying to pick this up. So I'm going to fold this one down. We're just going to stick that in front of our very front petal just so it sticks out just a little bit just like that. Okay, so that is our flower. And once it's dry, we're going to be able to kind of fluff these leaves a little bit, or fluff the petals a little bit. Um, so I'm going to set that one aside to dry as well. And let's work on our belly band. All right. So I have some shaded spruce and a different pattern of that Sunny Days DSP. This is that petal pink um, kind of check or grid. Oh yeah, Bobby, yeah, these papers would carry over. I know the celebration stuff never carries over though. It's very um, sad. You know, did I cut this one wrong too? So this is supposed to be 11 by one and a half. Let me grab my paper trimmer. Let me make sure that I cut these correctly. We only want a, um, yeah, that's one and a half. So my DSP, I think I cut a little smaller, but we're gonna have a bigger border on this one. Um, so the DSP is 11, or the cardstock is 11 by one and a half. And then this is 11, by it's supposed to be one and one eighth but I bet I only cut it at one yeah it's only one so we're gonna have a little bit bigger border this time but that's okay all right now when I'm doing a belly band I I don't like to score them and I'm only gonna do one at a time I'm gonna do the the cardstock first I'm gonna meet it in the middle in the front because and that way it's clean on the back we won't see any um, any score lines or anything on the back and I'm just going to go through and just kind of bend it and fold it just hold it nice and straight and then we're going to do the same thing bend it and fold it now you don't want it too super tight because then you won't be able to slide it off but you don't want it super loose because then it's going to come just fall off so you want it to have that that um sweet spot right in the middle there okay so i'm going to grab my glue here i'm going to put a little bit of glue on this side and we're just going to fold that over creating our belly band and if you want to go in with your bone folder just give that a little press you can absolutely do that so that's your belly band it's going to slide 
on and off your card. And now we're going to do the same thing with our with our DSP piece. And this one will will wrap a little bit easier. The DSP is a little bit thinner, so it's going to wrap a little bit easier. And then that's perfect. This time I'm going to put adhesive on the whole thing, and I'm going to use a tape runner for this one. Is the, the DSP we want to make sure adheres all the way to the belly band. And so I'm just going to run a line of adhesive all the way around this. And then we'll, we'll get this adhered down. Let's start on the, start on the back. Just line up those, those lines and wrap the front around just like that. Now the seam in the middle, it's going to be covered up. We're going to put our little label on that. So nobody's ever going to see that seam in the middle. And then the back is going to be nice and clean and our belly band will slide on and off. Okay. Let's go ahead and stick our, our inside panel down. Let's use a little bit of stamp and seal on this. And there's only going to be an eighth of an inch border on this. So just set that down. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put our, our flower on the inside. So I'm just going to put a little dot of glue in the middle. Again, a glue dot would be perfectly fine here. Um, and we're just going to set that flower down and we're going to tuck in a leaf. Whoops. There we go. You need to adhere. There we go. And I'll just put a little dot of glue on the edge of our leaf. And we're just going to tuck that under one of these petals. Just like that. So that will be our inside. Isn't that pretty? Then we're going to fold this over. Let's put our belly band back on. Just make sure everything stays nice and secure. And where is our little greeting? Here it is. We're going to stick this on. We're going to use dimensionals for this. Do I have... I don't have big dimensionals, so I'm going to actually cut a little piece here. I don't know where all my big dimensionals went. <laughs> Who knows? Um, and I'm going to put dimensionals on the belly band. Don't put it on this itself because this is going to hang over on the top and the bottom. And if you put this on, you're going to glue your card completely shut. You're not going to be able to slide it on and off. So always stick the, stick it to the belly band and we're just going to center this and it's going to cover up that seam. So nobody's ever going to see that seam. This is just going to look like one seamless piece. All right, let's get our flower on this side. So a little bit of glue on the back. You can use dimensionals for this. Some little mini ones would be fine. It's a little like that and I'm going to stick the leaf in and put some adhesive on the back of this and we'll just stick that leaf down just like that. Isn't that pretty? So we have this beautiful flower on the front. This little belly band will slide right off and then the inside is so pretty. And that angled, um, that angled card front is really, really fun. Okay. That needs to, the glue needs to dry. Dry glue, dry. Um, all right. Now to finish it off, I have these iridescent foil gems. These are brand new in our mini catalog. So you can get these. And my bone folder is in that little sample starter kit. So I'm just going to use my scissors and we're just going to use some of these. We're actually using these next week on next week's Celebration Sunday Project 2. That was completely accidental, but I guess you guys can see how much I love these little gems. So on. There we go. So I'm just doing three and I'm doing them on the little belly band label itself because um, that way they don't interfere when you're trying to slide it on and off. Okay, so that completes our card today. Isn't that adorable? So pretty. Um, so beautiful. You could send this to anybody. This is a great encouragement card. This is just a great little thinking of you card. So pretty. And I'll go ahead and leave this one open so we can see the inside of this one too. Now, I have two boxes coming up in the next week to share with you guys. On Wednesday, we're going to be doing, I have a little, I'm going to show them to you real quick just to make sure you kind of tune in. Wednesday, we're going to make this sweet little tiny little box. Isn't that cute? We're going to make this one on Wednesday in my Facebook Live. And then next Sunday for Celebration Sunday, we're going to feature the Flight and Airy DSP which is that beautiful bird DSP. And we're going to make this sweet little box. And I'm calling this a get well box. I can't wait to show you guys what's inside it. But um, we're going to make that sweet little box on next week for next week's Celebration Sunday with that flight and airy DSP. So I hope you guys will join me then. Um, if you are shopping, please make sure to head to my online store. Use this house code. All orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. Orders over 50 will receive that make and take kit too. If you are placing a big order, if it's over 150, don't use that host code because you're going to get Stampin' Rewards. If you're watching this on Facebook, please share this with your crafty friends or if anybody you think would enjoy this. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. That helps me out a lot. Um, 
It helps my business grow. It's free for you and you never miss a video. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. Um, let me know what you think of this DSP. I love it. It's my favorite, I think, for sure. And um, yeah, have a great week. And I will see you guys live on Wednesday for that fun little um, treat box. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye.